Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're ready to start putting this amp together. Like I said, I'm not messing around. We're gonna knock this one out. We've got our transformers mounted, we've got our speaker jacks all connected, got our IC socket on, and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna show you where all this stuff gets connected, how I wired all this up on the inside, and try to show you enough detail where you guys can follow along. Hopefully you can read a schematic well enough to be able to figure some of this out, but I will try to point out like the tag strips, how I laid things out, and where all the connections are made, so it's simple to follow along. So let's jump into the build. Well, I've got some of the power supply done, and let me kind of go over what I've done here. We got our tube socket bolted down here, and I decided to use this number seven pin of the tube socket, which is unused, as the grounding point for the first capacitor. And with this 5U4C, you have to use a fairly small input capacitor and so we're going with a 22 uf 450 volt this is the positive of the dc that's coming out of the rectifier tube so it goes to the positive side of the cap the negative terminal of the cap is soldered to this pin number seven and then we're going to run a jumper wire from here over to our star ground point here's the other side of the five volt heater then our 330 volt, actually 660 volt across the rectifier is on these two terminals here. The output of the rectifier tube goes to this lead to our choke, which is bolted back here. Then the other lead of the choke comes out and it goes to this terminal and this terminal. These two terminals are tied together and this is going to be our B+. So this red with the black stripe is the center tap of the 660 volt and it's tied to our star ground point which is the main ground for the amplifier everything's going to ground in this one spot right here and I'll show you in a second I ground the paint off around this terminal to make sure we got a really good solid chassis ground for our star ground point and then this terminal this terminal and this terminal are all tied together so we've got a little ground bus here with these three terminals to hook our grounds up to. And again, these two terminals are tied together. And this will be our B plus where we pull it off to go to our output transformer and up to the input and phase splitter tube for the plate of that tube. So the next tag strip is we've got this little guy over here. This is going to be our 6.3 volt heater setup. These are the two 6.3 volt AC lines. And then this white wire goes to this terminal right here. This is the center tap for our 6.3 volt heater. And we're going to put our voltage divider here to raise or lift the center tap up to I think it's around 55 volts using a voltage divider so we're going to this is going to be the ground and even though it's bolted to the chassis I'm going to go ahead and run a small ground wire over here to this star ground point and then we're going to run the B plus from here to this center terminal here and then we're going to put one resistor, I think it's 150K between this terminal and this terminal. And then there's 30K that goes from this terminal to this terminal. And then there's a 0.47 UF film cap that goes across this negative side. And that will deal with our center tap for our 6.3 volts. Over here, these are the AC lines that are going to go to this terminal the other wire is going to go up here to the switch that goes up to the front of the amp and then comes back and then it's going to hook to this terminal right here 
you want the switch hooked up to the fused terminal in case the switch shorts out it'll blow the fuse and then this is going to be our ground lug and I'm probably going to clean some powder coating off of this bolt here and ground the amp with a safety ground to this terminal right here although I may do like I've done on a lot of my other amps and just drill another small hole and use a little 440 screw to create the chassis ground here on the back right next to the IEC connector. You never want to run this up to the star ground point. You want to ground this separately to the chassis back here. And then let me turn this around and then you can see I've got the wires for the output transformer to the speaker jacks and this is the common 4 ohm, 8 ohm, 16 ohm and of course these jacks come in pairs of positive and negative but what I did let me turn this around again I got some red nail polish and painted the insulating washer red and then painted the little groove in the cap red so I have three reds and one black on the outside so it's obvious which one is the common or the ground then let me flip it back over and show you what the top side looks like at this point point. and then here's the top of the amp like I said I'm put a couple of little acorn nuts hold the choke down and I think that looks better than having just screws going through. You can leave in the comments what you think, but I think that looks better. And then we have our trim ring here that acts as the nuts for the screws that hold the tube socket in place. So gives that a nice clean look. And then we're using black Allen button heads to hold the transformers down. Then I'm going to run by the hardware store. I want to get some black screws and nuts and then get some black paint and paint these little washers black. I think these transformers look a lot better with black hardware. And for this one, I'm probably just going to get some uh, Phillips head pan head screws. Instead of doing Allen's, I think they look just as good. And they're cheaper and easier to deal with. So run by the hardware store tomorrow and pick some of those up for both the transformers on both amps have all that done and as you can see right here we've ground the powder coating off for our star ground point so we've got a good ground I also used some contact cement to attach these to the chassis both of these caps so they're nailed down and this just gives you a little different view of what this looks like and how these tag strips are done So I'm going to go ahead and come in here and run this B plus over here to our voltage divider, get these heater voltage divider thing all done, run our little ground over here. I got to run a ground from this terminal over to our star ground point as well to ground this cap. And then I'll have the power supply done. Next, we'll pull this up on a variac. And one thing to be warned about, don't pull up power supplies like this with no load on them, just plugging them into the wall. It'll skyrocket the voltage because it doesn't have any load on it and likely will exceed the voltage of these capacitors and can blow them up. So even though we're only in the you know 350, less than 350 volt range with a load, it could go over 450 volts with no load. And so make sure you use a Variac when you're testing something like this. So I just want to make sure that we've got DC and we've got, you know, pull this up where we have 330, 340 volts on the rectifier tube here or on the B plus terminal with the output. And then make sure that this heater center tap voltage looks reasonable or what we're expecting and then I can start wiring up some of this front end stuff and figuring out what I'm going to do with that so 
Next video, I'll have this stuff wired up that I'll show you. Oh, and I'm going to go ahead and wire up the switch, too, and get that wired up. So, making some progress. I think it's looking good. I like to seem like a really simple layout. As you can see, I've twisted all of these AC wires to reduce hum, and that's something you definitely need to do. That lead dress is super important. If you don't twist these wires, you will have hum in your amp. I found that out on my phono stage that I built that I didn't twist the wires between the transformer and the circuit board, and it had pretty nasty hum in it. So make sure you do your lead dress right. Anyway, I wanted to show you this before I ran all these jumpers and stuff in so it's a little easier to see how I did this wiring. And then I'll get all this wired up, get the switch wired up, then figure out how I'm going to get the DC for my indicator light, get that wired up, and then I'll be in a good place to start working on wiring up the output tubes and the input and the, you know, the amplifier part of the amplifier. So anyway, we'll be back soon for that. Okay, so we've got the wiring done to the power switch, the black leads that are the input to the power transformer. One of them connects here, which is the non-fuse side. In the previous video, I got these two backwards, so I want to correct that in this segment. One side connects to this terminal, which goes straight to the plug. This is the fused terminal. Goes through this twisted pair of wires up to the switch in the front. And it comes back and is soldered to the other lead that goes to the power transformer with some heat shrink tubing over it. And then down here below, we have the safety ground that goes over here to a 440 screw that's got a K-nut, one of the serrated washer lock nuts, then the lug and then another K-nut on top of it. So it's double nutted attached to the chassis down there with the paint scraped off so it gets a good connection. So that's our power switch. So what we've got left, we've got to hook up some grounds over here and put the voltage divider resistors on the heater center tap with the capacitor. So let's go ahead and solder this stuff in. Then we have this jumper wire that comes across over here to the star ground point. And then I'm going to go ahead and solder these connections. And then lastly, I'm going to put this little 0.47 UF film cap across that resistor. Let's go ahead and solder these in place. Come in with our flush cut snippers. Cut those two off. Then the next piece we're going to do is the little film cap it goes across that resistor. And I intentionally put the film cap over here, away from the resistor, just to keep it away from the heat. And what I'll probably do is stand the amp up on its end and go ahead and fill these holes up in this tag strip just to get a nice, really good solder joint there. So then, we're going to come back and solder this resistor in place. And 
This is our 150K resistor. Off. Just that resistor just a little bit. Here we go. So this creates our voltage divider. We have a 150K, a 30K with this little capacitor across between the center tap and the ground. Then we got to run a wire from here over to our B plus terminal to get our positive voltage on this. Again, this will be our gr kind of redundant ground, even though this terminal is bolted to the chassis. I want to go ahead and run a little redundant ground over here to the star ground point. So the next little ground wire we've got is this little guy right here. And it's going to go, it's going to ground the negative side of this filtering cap to the star ground point. And then finally, we're going to put this little ground wire over here that's going to ground our speaker terminal to the star ground point. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a little extra solder. I'm going to get the tip clean, put a little extra solder on it. So we can just hopefully quickly flow this into the solder that's already on the speaker terminal. I don't want to get it too hot. There we go. Get that soldered in. And we didn't get that too hot. And come over here and solder this whole little bundle of ground wires up. And we want to use gravity as our friend here. We're gonna flow it over all of these. And get a nice solder joint there for that bundle of grounds. I'll make sure this there we go. The only thing left is to make up the little jumper wire that goes from here over to here. So let me get one of those made up real quick. I think for this one we'll go up and over. Like this, and then it's going to be about right there. So kind of go across like that. that end and then come in here inside of this end and there we go so like I said I'm gonna stand the amp on its end so gravity is working with me and fill in this hole and this hole and this hole to kind of fill in these holes with solder so I know I've got a really good solid connection and then we'll be ready to power this thing up okay we're ready to power this thing up and check the voltage make sure everything is working like we want it to got the rectifier tube in go over real quick my testing equipment got my fluke meter I've got these little clip-on probe things that are 
handy and safe. Got my Made in China Variac, which if you read carefully, a lot of people don't notice this, inputs 110 volts. So I've got a bucking transformer that pulls the voltage down to 110 volts so that these numbers on the top are accurate. And then I've got a mark over here on the top where 120 volts is. So the power goes through the bucking transformer, then through the variac. The output of the variac goes to a one-to-one -one isolation transformer. And then it comes up through this cord into the amp. And what the isolation transformer does is it isolates the neutral from the safety ground in the fuse box. And I'll link below the video on tube safety. So let's go ahead and check out the power supply and see where we're at. We've got the very X turned on. Put this to DC volts. We're on our B plus and we're on our ground. And the other thing I want you to watch is count how many seconds it takes before we start seeing voltage here. I'm going to set this on about 80 volts to start with, and here's power on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there we go. It takes about seven or eight seconds before we really start seeing voltage to speak of over here. That's because we have an indirectly heated rectifier tube. The good thing about that is when you power it on, the heaters on the tubes get powered up instantly. And so it lets the input and output tubes in the amplifier get the heaters warmed up where they're ready to start conducting current before it ever sees any B+. And that really helps the life of the tubes and just keeps the power supply from spiking. If we had a solid state rectifier, as soon as you powered it on, the voltage would go to full max and then it'd be waiting for the current to start running through the tubes to pull the voltage down. And we'd probably have to run higher voltage filtering caps than these to keep them from exploding. It's especially true when you're running amps that have, you know, 400, 450 volts on the plate. It's really hard to find capacitors that will withstand that voltage shock from power on unless you have a indirectly heated rectifier tube that gives you that slow warm up. So as you can see, we've got 330 volts and we're only running 80 volts in and that's because we have no load on the system so if we had I'm gonna slowly turn this up and see how much input voltage it takes to get up to like 420 volts okay we're coming up on 420 volts, and that's 106 volts in. If I just plugged this thing into the wall with no load on it, it would have probably gone to 480, 500 volts, which is over the rating of these capacitors, and could potentially have blown them up before the amp even was turned on for the first time with the tubes all in it. So, use a Variac, guys. Don't just plug these things into the wall with a voltmeter to test the power supply unloaded. Not a good plan. So let's turn this back down to 80 volt range. The other thing to note here is in most of my amplifiers, you'll see me talking about having a bleeder resistor in place. And bleeder resistors are very, very important because if you don't have them, like just now, when I turned the voltage down, it would have stayed up there at whatever the high point was because we've charged up the capacitor and there's nothing to drain that voltage back down. In this case, the voltage divider over here 
And yeah, I'm not sticking my finger in the amp. It's about three inches above it. But that voltage divider right there is going from the B plus to the ground. And that's acting as our bleeder resistor in this amp. So we don't need to add another one. That voltage divider, which is 180K, is plenty to act as the bleeder resistor in this amp. So let's get it back up to 330 volts. So this is set. We know that'll be at 330. I'm going to power the amp off, let the voltage come down, and then move the probe and power it back on. Now, if you wanted to try to move the probe with the amp powered up, it's not quite as safe, but definitely keep one hand behind your back and make sure you have an isolation transformer. So, we're going to do it the safe way. We're going to power this off and let the voltage come down. You can see it's already dropping. And then once it gets down to zero, we'll move the probe and power it back up. And as you can see, even with the bleeder resistor, we've still got almost 100 volts after the time that this has been running. And so this doesn't drain instantly. It takes a little while for the voltage to come down. But you don't want to put a bleeder resistor that's so small that it pulls a bunch of current and makes a bunch of heat and has it instantly kill the power because when the tubes are in the amp, when you power it down, they're still going to be conducting until they cool off, and that's going to pull a lot of power out of this capacitor. And the bleeder resistor is just going to be draining down the last 80 volts or so that it'll have once the tubes stop conducting. So once it's below 20 volts, we can come in here and move this over here and this is the center tap of the 6.3 volt heaters to raise up the DC offset on those which I'll go over in a future video when I go over the schematic in detail about why that's needed but let's power this thing back up and again it's gonna take 8 or 10 seconds before the voltage starts climbing back up there it goes and I'm hoping to see about 55, 56 volts, something like that. There we go. 54 and a half volts. Perfect. So we know we've got the DC offset right on our center tap for the heaters. So power supply, everything's working just like it should. The only thing left to do is... I like running DC to the LED on the indicator light on the front panel and then also put a voltage drop resistor in it. So I've got a little tiny bridge rectifier that I'm going to put across the heater wires to rectify it to DC, put a little filter cap on it, and then we've got nice clean power going to the LED to make it last as long as it can. The power switch is something that you'd want to be replacing in this amp and the indicator LED is built into it so I like to protect it as much as I can for it to have a nice long life and also not flicker so I'm gonna wire up that little rectifier and get that indicator light wiring done and I'm done with the power supply and just waiting on a parts order next week so I think we're gonna wrap this up right here well, as you can see, we've got a lot done. Hopefully, within a couple of weeks, we're going to have this build finished and have this thing ready to test. I want to show you real quick. Again, this is my Variac, very common red one that you can see on Amazon and on eBay and other places. These things work good. Definitely, you need one of these things. The other one is this little isolation transformer. Unfortunately, they're not in stock in Amazon or even the company that makes these is saying it's going to be like September, I think, before they get more in. Supply chain and all that, guys, you know. So definitely, though, want an isolation transformer. Be warned that the ones they make for hospitals pass the ground through. They are not a true isolation transformer without some modifications. There's some videos on YouTube about how to do that, but... You definitely want a totally 
isolated, neutral isolation transformer for working on these things to try to minimize the chance of getting lethally shocked. I was happy to see all the voltages came out right where I wanted to see them. I think this rectifier tube that I've chosen is going to work great as at least as a starting point. And there are some other plug-in output tubes. There's the number that will take higher voltages and can handle higher current. So I believe the way I'm building this amp, you can use this 5U4C for the EL84s, and then you can drop a 5AR4 in when you want to run those other tubes. Also could use a solid state one, plugs in here too, if you want to jack the voltage up even higher. And this cool little one, it's a kit available on eBay that has a thermistor built into it too to help slow the startup voltage. So that's another option that we'll play with. Might do more of that when we go to fix bias. I think I mentioned in the comments of my last video, I'm probably not going to bolt the resistors in the top because I think this is going to end up being a fixed bias amp. And so... At least to start with, I'm just going to solder them in underneath and listen to it for a while as a cathode biased one, and then I won't have these holes in the top of it when I go to fix bias. I think that top mounting the resistors makes sense on amps like a 300B or a KT88 or any of those other amps that are dissipating a lot more current. And on this EL84, it's probably not going to be an issue just to have them floating underneath, not even bolted to the chassis. So that's probably what we're going to do on this. Anyway, I'm excited things are going as quickly as they are. Got the power supply all done. Still got to cook up the bridge rectifier with a smoothing cap and a dropping resistor for my indicator light. I'm going to knock that out this afternoon and have all that ready for Tuesday, Wednesday when my volume pot gets here. We can start moving forward further on this build and might even have this thing ready to power up and do some testing on it next weekend. So, yay, ripping along. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying this content. If you are, please consider making a small donation. Link below to my website, the donation page. It'll help offset the cost of some of these parts that I'm using to build these projects to share with you guys. And... While I enjoy doing this stuff, being able to make a little bit of money off of this to at least offset the cost of all these parts would be wonderful. So if you haven't contributed to the channel, that would be really sweet. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Please like the video. And until the parts come in, have a great day. Bye.